Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will discuss sampling and sampling theorem. So, sampling is used to convert a continuous time signal to discrete time signal. So, with the help of sampling, we convert a continuous time signal to discrete time signal. But why do we do so? We know that all real signals are continuous time signals, but why do we need discrete time signals? Well, because of the extensive use of the digital technology. The digital systems can process discrete time system, discrete time signals. The digital systems can perform operations on discrete time signals. That is why it is important to convert continuous time signals to discrete time signals with the help of sampling. Now to convert the discrete time signal back to the continuous time signal, we are going to have a certain criteria, a certain rule which is called the Nyquist criteria. We will discuss this Nyquist criteria in a few moments, but let us first discuss the sampling. So we have a signal which we call the message signal. And this message signal is my band limited signal. By band limited, I mean that the spectrum of this signal will be non-zero for limited range of frequency. So this is my continuous time band limited signal. And if I plot it in the frequency domain, if I plot its spectrum, it will be like this. It is non-zero for limited range of frequency from minus omega m to omega m this omega m is actually the maximum frequency component in this message signal so this omega m is the maximum frequency component of this message signal this message signal is going to have many frequency components this omega m is the maximum frequency component of this message signal or simply the maximum frequency of this message signal now to convert this continuous time band limit signal into discrete time signal we need to process it to the sampler now what is this sampler sampler is basically a multiplier so it is going to multiply this message signal m of t and and also multiply this message signal with the other signal which is called the c of t this c of t is actually a periodic impulse strain having fundamental fundamental time period equal to ts the time period of this signal is Ts. This is basically a periodic impulse tra train. And I can represent this signal C of T as summation minus infinity to infinity delta of T of minus N of Ts. When N is equal to 0, I am going to have a signal at delta of T, which is my this impulse. When N is equal to 1, I am going to have an impulse at uh, Ts at ts at t is equal to ts and so on so this message signal and this impulse train signal are multiplied together now this ts as i mentioned earlier is called my sampling period this is called my sampling period or sampling interval so this is my sampling period and sampling interval where this omega s which will be basically 2 pi divided by ts is going to be my sampling frequency sampling angular frequency or sampling frequency now when these two signals are multiplied together the band limited continuous time signal and the impulse train periodic impulse train signal i am going to have a resultant signal which is like this this is basically the sample signal the weight of this impulse is equal to the instantaneous value of the continuous time signal at m of t. For example, the weight of this impulse at t is equal to ts is going to be equal to the weight of this impulse equal to the weight of this signal at time t is equal to ts. So accordingly, we have the sampled signal. Now this sampled signal s of t is basically a multiplication of m of t and c of t. So let us perform the mathematics. Let us do the mathematics. So S of t will be equal to m of t multiplied by ct, where ct is a periodic impulse train of signal and m of t is my continuous time signal which needs to be converted to the discrete time signal. So I can write in frequency domain that S of omega is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi m of omega convolved with c of omega. Now the Fourier series expansion of this signal we have already done in, in example 2.9 in BP Larty book is equal to C of omega is equal to omega s minus infinity into infinity delta of omega minus n omega s where omega s is the sampling frequency. So in place of this C omega which is the 
uh, frequency domain of this signal C of T, I am going to put it over here. So when I put it over here, and I am going to have this equation, which is this thing. Now this omega s will be taken out and when this omega s is taken out we are going to have omega s divided by 2 pi which is equal to 1 by t s and this summation I am going to move it to the left side. So as a result we are going to have a signal s of omega is equal to 1 divided by t s summation minus infinity to in infinity m of omega convert, convert with s of omega minus n omega s. Now we are going to use the impulse signal property which is then when x of t is converted with delta of t minus t1 we have x of t minus t1. So here m of omega is converted with delta omega minus n omega s. So this will be equal to m into omega minus n omega s. And if I expand this at n is equal to 0 I am going to have m omega. m omega is basically my this thing. And then for n is equal to 1, I am going to have m omega minus omega s and so on. And similarly for negative, uh, negative values of n, I am going to have m omega plus omega s and so on. So I am going to have this equation. Now this equation consists of m omega, which is basically, this is my m omega. This portion is my m omega. This is my m of omega. And then I have m omega minus omega s, which is basically shifted to the right by omega s. So if you can see over here, this signal has been shifted to the right by omega s. And the left portion will be my omega s minus omega m, and the right portion will be omega s plus omega m. Similarly for m omega plus omega s, this will be shifted to the left by minus omega s. So this will be minus omega s, this will be minus omega m, minus omega s, and minus omega s plus omega m. Now you can see over here that omega ma s minus omega m is greater than omega m. So omega minus s minus omega m which is basically this portion is greater than omega m because omega s minus omega m is on the right side because so it means it is greater. So omega s minus omega m is greater than omega m or we can write omega s is greater than 2 omega m where this omega s is my sampling frequency. The sampling angular frequency or the sampling frequency. Sampling frequency. And this omega m is the maximum frequency of the message signal. Maximum frequency of the maximum frequency component of the message signal m of t. So that's why we have a space over here. And, and this space can be called as the guard band. Now suppose for case number 2, these two frequencies are equal, that is we have omega m, that is omega s minus omega m is equal to omega m. In this case omega s will be 2 times the omega m. And in this case if we plot the spectrum, we are going to have, in that case we are going to have the frequency spectrum like this. Again this is my s of omega which is the sample signal. So in that case because omega s minus omega m is equal to omega m so we have no space over here. Now in the case if omega s is less than this 2 omega m. In that case we are going to have overlapping over here. So if you can see over here for omega s sampling frequency less than 2 omega m we have overlapping over here. Again this is 0 this is going to be my minus omega m, this is going to be my plus omega m, where is this point, this point is going to be equal to minus omega s plus omega m. Similarly, this point is going to be equal to, this point is going to be equal to omega s minus omega m. So because omega s minus omega m is now less than omega m, so that is why we are going to have omega s less than 2 omega m. And in that case, if you can see over here, we have overlapping over here. And this will be continued from over here. So, to, now in this case, in case of overlapping, I cannot recover the original signal. At best, I need omega s is equal to 2 omega m for recovery of this uh, sample signal back to the continuous time signal. So, based on this, we have the Nyquist criteria or the Nyquist theorem, which is also called the sampling theorem. So, what is sampling theorem? Sampling theorem states that to recover the original signal from the sampled signal, the sampling frequency must be greater than or equal to the two times the maximum frequency of this message signal. So if we can have a look over here, 
this sampling frequency must be equal to you can have a look over here in this case we have omega s greater than 2 omega m we can recover the signal and in this case we have omega s is equal to 2 omega m again we can recover the signal but if this is smaller than that then we have the overlapping we have interference in that case we cannot recover the signal so this is the statement of the sampling theorem which says that the sampling frequency must be greater than the two times the frequency of the highest component in the message signal then we can recover the uh, original signal from the sampling signal i can also write this f is greater than or equal to 2 f so this was about sampling and sampling theorem and this sampling theorem is called, also called the nyquist criteria thank you